<laughs> Everybody's heard of Mac Cargo? Macargo? I don't know how to pronounce it. I quit when there were still 150. <laughs> Macargo is this weird fire snail thing that lives next to volcanoes. So here's a picture of the guy. <laughs> According to the Pokedex, his body temperature is approximately 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's put that back in context with what we just talked about. So let's convert that to Kelvin since I work with those pretty well. And where did this fall? Oh yeah, that's about twice the surface of the sun. <laughs> Sounds fun to me. So what are the effects of that? Well, the sun does this nasty little thing with ultraviolet radiation, which gives us sunburns if we're lucky, cancer if we're not. Uh, so we don't really want a lot of ultraviolet exposure. Fortunately, our atmosphere protects us from a lot of it because we're looking at the sun through a ton of atmosphere. So the question I want to ask is, if we're not getting that much atmosphere, how much damaging ultraviolet radiation would a Pokemon trainer 10 meters away receive compared to that of the sun? We'll use the amount of sun as a standard reference and talk about just how bad this can get. So to understand this, what we first need to talk about is something known as a black body curve. What a black body curve is, it starts off with this equation up here, which is nasty and I'm not going to go through. You're welcome. But basically what it says is this. You have the brightness of something being related to its temperature down here and its wavelength. So it will make a curve like this, and the hotter it gets, the brighter it's going to be overall, but also the peak of it is going to be moving more and more towards, if you're in the visible part of the spectrum here, the blue end, and then outside the other end of the blue is the ultraviolet. And you go far enough, and then you get the ultraviolet B rays, which are the ones that are damaging. Over here we have the infrared, which is where humans glow. But that cargo is going to be a bit warmer. So that's what we're looking at, is how far is Macargo going to shift this curve and how much radiation is he going to be giving off in the UV part. So we can use that equation, plug in for the UVB spectrum wave, uh, wave, wavelengths, so 315 nanometers to 280, so that's ultraviolet. And then we can put that in and integrate across that. And for Macargo, he is going to give off 6.44 times 10 to the 23rd watts per meter squared per steradian, which is a really weird angle that you have to act, or unit that you have to use when you're working in three-dimensional spherical trigonometry. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, is that all? Yeah, that's not bad. So basically what it is, is if you think of a cube and you have a pipe going through it or something, it's linear. But in a spherical coordinate system, it gets bigger as you grow, kind of like if you put a wedge down to the center of the Earth. Same idea, except uh, it's going to be getting bigger as you go out. So Macargo gives off that number, and then if I do the same thing for the sun, the sun only gives off 2.15 times 10 to 22. So the sun is giving off about 15 times less ultraviolet radiation per square meter than the snail Pokemon. <laughs> But there's a couple other things that are going to factor in here. First off, the distance. Uh, last year when I was talking about uh, the size of galaxy size mechas and things, one of the things I would say is galaxies are big, cars are small. Well, this one, Pokemon are close, sun is far. So that's the summary, is that sun's far away, so it's going to be spreading out that ultraviolet radiation a lot more than this little Pokemon 10 meters away from you. Also. What is important is that the sun has a much, much bigger surface area. Sure, it may be far away, but the sun is freaking huge. So even though per square meter it's going to give off about 12 times less, it has a lot more square meters to give off. So let's try to balance these out and figure out which one is going to win and which one's going to be worse. So for Macargo, we can multiply all this together, and what we're going to get is that the amount of energy we are going to be receiving from a cargo at 10 meters is 3.22 times 10 to the 21 watts. Okay, let's compare that. The sun, we get about 2.94 times 10 to the 15. <laughs> six orders of magnitude. That means 10 to the 6. A million times more. Wow. So that's not going to be happy. But one more thing is going to make it worse. Remember I said the atmosphere protects us from the sun? It absorbs 98% roughly of that UV radiation. 
So we have to take what we were getting from the sun and multiply it by 2-3% and knock out the rest of it. So if we do that, we're not even getting that much. Instead, we only get 8.82 times 10 to the 13th watts per square meter. Divide this out to get the actual ratio, and we are getting 3.65 times 10 to the seventh times as much UV radiation from a cargo as we do from the sun. <laughs> 36 million times as much. Ask Ketchup is Ask Ketchup is not going to be Ask Ketchup. He will be Ash Crispy. <laughs> So obviously, McCargo is not something you want to have when you catch them all. 